Alright people, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, host Jan. I hope you are all doing well. I do hope that. Welcome back to the channel and to today's Chelsea News video where I'm going to be talking about strikers, left backs, and Danny Drinkwaters. Oh man, he's just basically a meme by now. And another piece of positive doesn't say transfer news, but contract news, which is all pleasantly moving things in the right direction. A lot of interesting gear to crack open today, but before we get into it, I want to remind you guys quickly to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet done so, we're doing the grind, man, so please do sub, bell, notifications, icon, and all that, like the video, help a brother out. Follow me on the socials, let's get into it. Right, let's start off with some good news. Football Insider have reported that a source close to them have let them know that Chelsea are about to offer a five year new deal to attacking midfielder Tino Andrin. This is superb news as Tino is incredibly highly rated at Chelsea Football Club and obviously of course by Lampard and Jody who work closely with him. He trains with the first team, he's already made two first team appearances this season, the youngster the teenager. He is so highly rated, people say he's got a bigger hype about him than Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Now, you know I'm a massive Ruben Loftus-Cheek fan in terms of the dynamic he offers on the pitch. Uh, Tino is built similarly. He's, big, he's a big old boy, but he's a bit more of an offensive midfielder. Now, Ruben Loftus-Cheek offers a lot of, a, of offensive play, especially considering how far back generally he plays in the left centre mid role. Tino, although he's a big boy, he's very, very technical with his feet and he can move the ball fast. And he's kind of like a number 10, just a hench number 10. Obviously, the last time we saw him is when he was missing that relatively easy chance when Billy Gilmore squared the ball to him against Everton. Now, in the post-match interview when Billy was asked about that, he was like, yeah, I could have taken the shot on, but I saw Tino there and Tino doesn't miss. That's what he said, Tino doesn't miss. He missed. <laughs> Obviously that happens in this kind of moments for youngsters, but still, obviously very very highly rated i'm not going to pretend to have watched him loads obviously he was at the grimsby game when he came on and he actually did look very very good indeed when he came on with ian matson more on him next but i think this could work in the premier league have a big hench number 10 someone who can play between the lines you know move the ball quickly but also occupy center backs with a bit of strength that doesn't rely on dribbling tino can be that man so superb news if he does get locked down for another five years the youth revolution moves on chelsea can focus their the majority of their summer transfer funds on big signings knowing they've got all the talent filling the gaps in between. So I mentioned Dean Matson, let's mention him again. Obviously in yesterday's video I talked about him signing a new contract. Superb scenes in indeed, another very highly rated youngster who has made a, already made an appearance in the first team this season as well. Liam Twomey of The Athletic posted an article about the sort of ramifications of him signing this long term deal and what it means and he made it comparable to Tarek Lamptey not extending a deal and going to Brighton. Now Lamptey is very very highly rated with Chelsea. He looked amazing when he came on against Arsenal, how he was bombing up the field, but he didn't want to sign, he went on to Brighton. Now, Ian Matson has signed. He signed a very long-term deal and he's confident now. Apparently, what's being rumoured or the speculation or certainly what's being implied here is Frank Lampard, neither Alonso or Emerson are in his long-term plans. Certainly we can speculate Emerson isn't because he hasn't got anywhere near the first team of late, but apparently neither is Alonso. He's not in the mould of a left back that Frank Lampard wants. He doesn't suit the player profile. He's pushing 30, which is not ideal for a fullback in the Premier League these days. And he just doesn't really fancy it. I think he respects the fact how he can score goals, but Frank Lampard himself has been like, yeah, it's great, it's been helping us, but I don't want my left back to be the person we're relying on for goals. Which is fair enough. So Chelsea are in for a proper top tier left back, but if both these left backs are going out the door, Ian Matson fancies himself to be the second left back at Chelsea Football Club. And not just that, challenge for the first place. Matson knows he will be given the chance and his age won't be a factor in the gaffer making a decision on who to play. He'll look at Emerson and Alonso, how they've been fighting out for that first spot for a while. He'll fancy he can do the same with whoever comes in, be that Chilwell or Tellez more in that next. He'll fancy he can do it and he can hold on to the place. He knows if he trains well, he'll be in. Lampard and Jody will put him in the team if he does well. So that's why he signed a long-term contract. He will fancy next season, even next season, he can be Chelsea Football Club's first choice left back. He could play a Tellers out of the team, he reckons, which is great. 
it's superb for a young player to have such ambition. I'm not sure if he could do that straight away, but the point is he's very dynamic and exciting. And obviously the gaffer backs him and he looks at him and he goes, right, you play the way I want you to play. You've literally just turned 18 a day or two ago. So chill, like, you know, train with the first team for another season or throughout that season, you might get in the team more, fill out a little bit, you know, develop your game and yeah why not be in the first team you know why not this could happen very very exciting indeed cool so saying on the left back situation Nizar Kinsella tweeted out an article he wrote regarding the left back situation and talking about Chelsea's two main targets now if both Alonso and Emerson are going out the door and Matson is going to be one left back. They'll still need another left back that can slot straight in. And to both Ben Chilwell and Alex Tellez. Now, if you watch this channel, you will know that I'm not the biggest fan of late of Ben Chilwell in terms of how he's been performing on the pitch. He's sort of stank out of the place for a few months. He might have been better last game. I didn't keep a close eye on him, but he was not a poor vein of form, which was frustrating considering how much money Leicester would want for him. Now, Kinsella cites in his article how Chelsea are... Not confident they'll sign Ben Chilwell because of how Leicester played ball with Manchester United and Maguire. They wanted, they got, what was it, 80 million plus or something crazy for Maguire? He's a good centre back, but he's not that good. And they imagine he'll, they'll do something similar for the transfer of Ben Chilwell, and he's probably just not worth it, which for me is a bit of like a thank God situation. Also, in this article, we can sell it talks about how Chelsea have long admired Alex Tellez and they were going to purchase him a couple of times, but opted for both Alonso and Emerson when they were in the market. Now, you could look back at Alonso and go, yes, superb purchase, left wing back, supreme, Chelsea won you know, the Premier League with him, he was a huge part of that, and the FA Cup, so that was probably a good choice, ultimately. Maybe not so much Emerson, frustratingly, he did look bright at times, but didn't really cut it, but now it might finally be the time to get Alex Tellez. They are negotiating with Porto. They want to pay less than what Porto want. He'll have one year left on his deal, and they thought they'd get it for £20 million. They want double, so they're at a bit of a deadlock in negotiations, but it still might happen as Alex Tellez is rumoured to want the move to Chelsea. So watch this space, and I'll keep you guys updated on the situation. Make sure you swing by Football Therapy Daily, and I'll give you guys the news. Right, before we talk about Danny Drinkwater, a quick up down Michy Batshuayi. It does look like he's out the door in the summer. When you're on the bench behind Giroud because there's no injured, because, because Tammy Abraham is injured, and Armando Broyo comes on before you, you're like, all right, I'm done. And to be honest, yeah, dude, you're probably done. He'll only have one year left on his contract come the summer, and although Chelsea wanted £45 million for him in January, that will drop dramatically, especially considering he's not playing. They might try and sort of get a similar return of what they purchased him for. I think they got him for £32 million ish. If they can get that back off him, that'll be fine. It'll be a bit of one of those second striker stories of what could have been and meh and thank you for the odd goal and high profile goals and you're a good character and all this kind of gear but thank you and see you later. But it will be interesting to see where Michy Batshuayi goes. He's sort of giving me Loic Remy vibes now, you know? <laughs> Finally, let's talk about Danny Drinkwater. Drinkwater was sent home from training after headbutting Jota or Jota, a teammate. Ugh. How much did he cost Chelsea? Like 35 million pounds, like more? More than Hakim Ziyech. He, he scored that one goal, which was lovely. And then he just... He, the thing is, his interaction with players, he seems like a really friendly guy. Everyone loves him. He sort of speaks well. But behind closed doors, he's just getting pissed up. He's starting fights. He's headbutting teammates. He's in the... What, what, you know, he's awful on the pitch. Whether it's Burnley or Aston Villa. It's almost like he won the Premier League and he's like, right, I'm just going to get wrecked now and get into fights and, you know, whatever, get paid. Dude's getting paid. Just mental, isn't it? I think that's one of Chelsea's worst ever signings. I mean, you could argue people like Torres cost a lot, but he won the Champions League. He scored a few high-profile goals. <laughs> you know, Bakayoko, but at least he's playing football places. I just think with Danny Drinkwater, so much money for a player who's just been so disappointing. Anyway, that's going to be one of those players that Chelsea make a huge loss on and it's just going to remain a bit of a meme for Chelsea Football Club until his contract expires or they release him or something weird happens. Anyway, I want to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on the stuff I've spoken about in this video, whether that be Ian Matson challenging for the first team left back spot, Tino Andrin being a number 10 option and potentially signing this new deal. Let me know your thoughts and opinions and all the stuff I've discussed in the video today 
down in the comment section below and if you've enjoyed the content I'd appreciate you liking the video, subscribing and all that good gear. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick. Alright ladies and gents, that's it from me. You'll enjoy the football and I will. See you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.